All right. These adjusters are adventurous. I have never heard of any draft quota existing on the Vinnington. No adjuster is ever a draftee. Every adjuster is a volunteer. I suppose the only time they make a selection is if they have more than one volunteer. But that's merely a choice as between volunteers. And is this a kind of a Pollyanna-ish, blind, uh, sentimental, injudicious love? Gosh, no. These thought adjusters who have volunteered have not volunteered for the human race in general in some area. They volunteered specifically for each one of us. And they did so with knowledge aforetime. They did so with a full forecast of exactly what they were getting into, precisely. They saw all of the pitfalls, all of the probabilities, all of the chances they were running. This was not the volunteering of blind audacity. This was the volunteering based on cool, intelligent, calculated courage. They knew precisely the odds. <laughs> All right, this being the case, why don't you tell your thought adjuster about this planet he's in? I don't think the adjuster registers very much of it, but you can register on the thought adjuster. How? Talk. It's the only way I know to communicate is in words. I talk, usually in the privy because I experienced the greatest probability of privacy and solitude. <laughs> oftentimes, oftentimes in uh, the bedroom on a train, or maybe I hope silently in the seat of an airplane. Or driving. Yeah. Or driving the car alone. Kid your thought adjuster a little bit. Say, look, look, pal, did you realize what you were getting into? Hey, pay him some attention. This, this should be a camaraderie. And I don't think anything you say in sincerity could possibly give offense. You follow me? Words are unimportant. I'll never forget one old boy. He was in an awful jam, and I suggested he pray. And he looked at me. With amazement, he says, you pray? I said, sure. A very hard-boiled character who's gotten up but with, with more with this than with any alphabet after his name. And he said to me, well, he said, if I were to pray, how should I pray? Well, I said, if I were in your boots, I'd pray natural. Well, he says, what do you mean? Well, I said, I'd just talk to God and say, dear boss, as you can plainly see, I'm in a hell of a fix, and I need some help damn fast, and what are you going to do about it? He says, you mean talk to the Almighty that way? I said, sure, that comes natural to you. He says, you talk that way? I said, no. I have other forms of expression, but that's the way you talk to your foreman. Why not talk to God that way? That's your natural mode. <coughs> you ever try to make love to your thought adjuster? No. Yeah, why not? I, I, I can see nothing to be afraid of there. And this adjuster, I think, would enjoy some attention, even stupid attention. Hmm? Here we know. Here we know. If that person can use an experienced adjuster, he'll get one. If he couldn't use one, he won't. Example. Let's say that you had a series of adjusters volunteering to indwell the being who is to become Simon Peter. You've got three virgin adjusters. You've got an adjuster who once indwelt a great mechanical engineer on some planet where they fuse with a spirit fusion technique. You've got another adjuster who indwelt a great lawyer who didn't survive. And you've got a, another adjuster who indwelt a great orator. 
which would you assign? Why not the orator? That's Peter's aptitude. The adjuster can utilize. But this was before Peter was born. Yeah, but the forecast is there. They've got a working model of Simon Peter up there. But he could follow on up and not become the Exactly. <laughs> exactly, yes. A part of the adjuster's job is a continuous rework of the original plan as point by point we smash it through our decisions. And the adjuster has got to reconstruct the best plan with the pieces that remain. No. It speaks of the adjuster as lonely in here. It speaks of this indwelling as an incarceration. And I would submit that if God can derive satisfaction from the worship offered by ascending mortals on paradise, this indicates that God enjoys intelligent appreciation. And this adjuster is a fragment of God, partaking of the nature of God. And is there anyone here who doesn't like attention? How about that? Wouldn't you rather catch hell and be ignored in the long run? I don't think the adjuster is any different. I think the adjuster would enjoy some attention. And there's plenty of times in privies and other times when you have nothing else to do that I think it would be nice to pay some attention to the thought adjuster. Can you give him too much attention? Mm -mm. The demands of this world are too great. But I don't follow by... Listen. Then it's only from our viewpoint, then, really. It wouldn't be from his. I think he appreciates and enjoys it. God appreciates worship. I, I'm sure of that. All right, uh, he is of the, the nature the of God. Part, I don't quite follow. Uh, it, our experience. I think he wants our love. Yes, that I follow. Yes, and attention right. is one way of showing love. But the, uh, the it's spending some time with him. It's just not taking him for granted, as as a child probably takes its parents for granted. There's a part before that that I didn't follow. Uh, where no, he is not. He's not. He's no, a qualified is. absolute, not not an unqualified absolute. I see. That's what I didn't understand. Put it this way. I think the adjuster can get the full calories of experience in the mortal indwelling with or without what we're talking about. But I think if you showed him you loved him and paid some attention to him, you would be putting salt and pepper on his fried eggs. It would taste better. It would not add to the caloric value of the experience, but it would add to the pleasure of the eating. Well, Beyond this, if you had if you had a business partner, and you liked your business partner, would you limit your intercourse with that partner yeah, purely to business? Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. It's the social overtones of a partnership relation. Right. Well, I think My thought adjuster. I kid with him. When we get into a strange town, I say, "What do you think of this bird?" You know. And I try to tell him what kind of a town this is, because I know he can't perceive it. I tell him what it means to a person. I take time out to try to act as a good interpreter and a good guide to a being who can't really perceive where he is. Why can't he? Well, I thought I made that clear. No, I'm still uh, the out. I guess it's in part two. What, we're try what I'm trying to do here in part is to give you a feeling of greater empathy for uh, page 498 is the uh, Celestial Artisans written by an Archangel of Nebadon. Let's start in paragraph three. 